discussion next time then. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> so we can't do it all by ourselves, Julie noted. But in Norway, we, we think that we are front runners on, on CCS, but others are catching up. The recent developments in Danish CCS policy and industry projects are solid, solid proof of that. Søren Reinald Paulsen is project director of Greensand, a CO2 storage site in Denmark. He will now present the latest updates on the project and how CCS will soon be realized in Denmark. Welcome, Søren. You're muted, Søren. So I am classic. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for the opportunity to uh, present Project uh, Greensand in Denmark. Uh, this presentation will primarily be a, uh, a information, but also a status update on where we are in the maturation process of uh, this very exciting uh, CCS opportunity in the uh, Danish part of the North Sea. So, so title is on route to deliver CO2 transport and storage capacity in the mid 20s. So, so you will see later on a uh, timeline showing 25. But, but of course, there are some uncertainties related to uh, to the full value chain. So, it's the hen and the egg uh, dilemma here. So, so who comes first and so forth. But uh, that's something we have to live with, and uh, I'm all excited. Uh, I listed here our three main drivers, and I think that those are common drivers for all CCS projects: uh, safe, reliable, and cost efficient. The last part is, of course, to be, have a competitive edge, but also the reliability part and the safe is something that the customers are looking into as well. So these three uh, key drivers are very important to us and are sort of fundamental, the flag post in our, in our uh, project, Green Chain. I'm here as a representative for uh, Ineos Energy Denmark. Uh, we are leading up the Green Sand Consortium Phase 2. But we have an interesting set of, uh, of uh, skilled and, and uh, muscular uh, partners, so, so I'll come back to that. So let me, uh, let me dig into the, uh, the essence of what we're doing. If I, can, uh, if I can change, yeah, here we are. I'm sure a similar plot have been shown during today. Uh, sorry for not being able to participate, but uh, I just wanted to show you a snapshot I'm not sure it's fully updated because the CCS landscape is developing minute by minute, as I see it. But we, you can see Green Sand is a sort of well positioned amongst all the CCS projects uh, on either the drawing board or in the uh, development pipeline. Green Sand itself uh, is just on the back of, uh, for instance, Northern Lights. So, so we plan for a startup uh, in 25 with a capacity around half to one and a half million tons per year. Our base case is currently, and that's our full-scale project, that's one and a half million tons. And we have moved from a half to one and a half simply because there's so much customer interest, both in Denmark, but also on a, on a European level. Uh, once we have proved that we can store, uh, store the CO2 safe, reliable, and uh, cost-efficient, we will, uh, we'll, depending on demand, obviously, we'll ramp it up. And, and uh, by end of 2030, we believe we have a a capacity between uh, four to eight million tons per year. And here I'm only talking about the reservoir themselves in terms of capacity. The underlying aquifer holds a, a much bigger potential, but uh, that is not something we're looking into currently. But, but, but uh, cautious high level numbers are 25 to 30 mi million tons per year in the aquifer itself of uh, CO2 storage, storage capacity. So here's uh, a zoom in on, on Denmark. Um, on the left here, you can see there's a map showing the Danish part of the North Sea with all the uh, producing oil and gas fields. Also some lines indicating pipeline infrastructure and so forth. What we are talking about is uh, the Inish operated uh, sea fairway, uh, which is in the right upper corner of the map there. And I circled in, in red here the, the, the focus area right now, because we're starting with the Nini reservoirs. Um, um, because they, they, they can deliver one and a half, and, and the Nini reservoirs, they are close to being uneconomical. So, so we would like to start with those so we can, we can play with those in the coming years without disturbing our oil and gas production. But in essence, we believe that we will finish all production from CFA in 25, 26, and then there's a good uh, time for, for switching to, uh, to pure CO2 storage uh, service. On the map below, you can see the uh, satellite platform uh, encircled in the red circle here. 
That's the Nini A platform, and uh, this is the target for, for our full-scale project, the 1.5 million tons per year. Uh, the two other drawings on, on the right is simply showing the, uh, the capacity uh, uh, of the 8 million tons per year that we believe we, we may be able to deliver by 2030, again, demand, uh, dep depending on demand, of course. Uh, we think the beauty about this is simply uh, that we will uh, we'll, uh, get Nini up and running, understand it, optimize it, and then we will, of course, uh, scale up as we see there's a demand and harvest all the uh, the, uh, the synergies and the, uh, the economies of scale uh, associated by doing so. Um, so we are standing, uh, the tile here, I, I can't, sorry, I can't see it because of the way we present, but, but basically it says that, uh, that uh, of course, we, we see ourselves as front runner, uh, not only in terms of uh, capacity and timing, but also because we know our facilities out there already, and we are going to use the facilities to uh, to to the uh, to enable the CO two storage in uh, as cheap as possible. But we also have two decades of uh, of experience in terms of producing our CO fairway uh, reservoirs, both oil and gas, but certainly also gas injection and water injection. So we know both directions. Liquid CO2 is, of course, a different matter, and that's why we have um, decided that we would like to do a, a, um, a pilot project, and this is what we call Green Sand uh, Phase 2. This has very high attention from the government simply because it, it's, uh, Green Sand is actually able, in its full-blown capacity, 8 million tons per year, is able to deliver 40% of the Danish uh, greenhouse gas uh, emission reduction targets. So this is illustrated on the figure here. So by 2030, we we can, if we be, uh, deliver the 8 million tons per year, then we're actually delivering 40% of the 2030 target set forth by the Danish government. And that's why we uh, we are getting uh, full support from uh, what's called the EUDP. It has nothing to do with, do with EU. It's, uh, it's a Danish uh, funding organization under the uh, energy uh, ministry. And they actually supported us in uh, in December 21, uh, 2021 with 197 million Danish kroners out of a total project budget of 450 million kroners. So, so close to 50%. So, so the uh, government backing is very uh, significant here. And uh, of course, that, uh, that, uh, that means that we have a, a huge responsibility towards the government and the society. So, uh, but what we are for the challenge and, and, uh, and, uh, we are sharing what we are learning here on the pilot project so uh, everybody can benefit from it. Basically, the pilot project is uh, taking a existing uh, well, well on Nini uh, that is not being currently used today, but it's out there and just standing still. We will uh, use that as a candidate for injecting CO2 into the Nini reservoir. First, we will transport uh, CO2, liquefied CO2 from our Ineos oxide plant in Antwerp in Belgium put it in iso uh, containers, 20 tons per container, and put it on a truck and then deliver it on, on, the, on the harbor in Antwerp and then unload it, uh, offload it to uh, load it on the, uh, the ship that will take it all the way out to the Nini site. The ship, if you look at drawing E, you can see the ship there. It has 40 containers on board. So that's 800 metric tons you can have per, per, per sailing cycle. And we do expect to inject around 11,000 metric tons of uh, CO2. Uh, so, so that entails uh, a, a, a two-digit number of, uh, of uh, ships sailing back and forth. We'll do the, this for three months. And uh, at the end, we will, uh, of course, have recorded a lot of data, uh, both, uh, both uh, well data, but also uh, monitoring data. We will have uh, monitoring technologies uh, Deployed, which will which will enable us to measure, let's uh, for instance, uh, CO2 content in water, seismic uh, activity in the uh, underburden, and uh, or the uh, the reservoir itself and the overburden, and also uh, uh, how the CO2 plume uh, actually developed uh, during the injection trial throughout the reservoir that we are targeting. So super interesting, and it will deliver a lot of good data uh, that will. Uh, help de-risking before we take the big uh, investment decision later in 23. Um, 
we are not alone on this. We have, of course, our our beloved uh, partner on, uh, on, uh, on Nini, that is Vincendia. So we are partnering up in a classic oil and gas joint venture with Vincendia on on the, on both uh, Nini and Cecily uh, in the Cecily area. So so uh, the driving force has, at this point, been uh, been uh, Vincendia and Ineos and a couple of other companies. But now that we have embarked on phase two, we are, we have a strong consortium of 23 com uh, companies. Uh, that includes uh, Merce Drilling, who's going to deliver the rig, Blue Water, who's going to sell uh, sail the uh, CO2 out to uh, to the rig, uh, uh, Semco Maritime, who's delivering the pump, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of companies involved, and they're all key to the su success of the uh, project. Um, I, I, when I look at it, I usually call it the uh, stakeholder managers, managers nightmare. But I can tell you, we just started and it, and it looks promising. People are very motivated and keen on moving this along and, and uh, deliver as promised. So not only the pilot project uh, needs to be kicked off in order to meet our 25, uh, 26 uh, deadlines or targets. And hence, we are in parallel actually maturing uh, what we call phase three. And that is uh, looking into the full-scale project. And this time around, we are not, we are not uh, selling out with 800 metric tons uh, each time with uh, on the ships. We are we are looking into building uh, uh, rather large ships. Let's say between 12,000 and and maybe 20,000 20, metric tons uh, carrying uh, carrier capacity. And the drawing there, you can see that uh, the plan is to have those come uh, 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 come and and uh, and inject the CO2 using a cell system, which we are used to uh, operating because uh, oil from Syria is, is today offloaded through the cell system and uh, into a tanker. So we'll use that uh, that experience just in a re reverse mode. And then we'll, uh, we'll take the CO2 uh, on top of the Nini platform and inject it into a new drilled dedicated CO2 wells that have the, the right materials in place so we don't uh, have a problem with, uh, for instance, corrosion and so on. The old wells already drilled there, destined for, for oil and gas uh, oil and gas production in, in the past. They will, uh, if possible, they will use for for monitoring wells, so we can uh, uh, monitor downstairs real time, understand what happens when we inject the CO2 on uh, the long term basis. Remember, the uh, the uh, short term pilot uh, test is only for ninety days, so so of course, we we are also eager to understand how the CO2 develops on a on a long term. That knowledge we can use when we develop the other reservoirs and ramp up to eight metric tons per year. And then, uh, then below you can see here's our timeline. So, so uh, in, we have started the phase two pilot. It's just kicked off. The full scale is is about to be kicked off. And once we have uh, learned from the pilot, we are in a position, given that we, all the regulatory parts are in place. To, to sanction the project in the, the second half of uh, 23. And then we we are busy. Uh, we we realize that, of course, and uh, it's all depending on the, on the full value chain, especially the transporters. How fast can we build a ship and so forth? But that's, uh, that's on the next update from me. Uh, at this point, we are focusing on the pilot, get it up and running, and then embarking on a classic maturation scale of a full full uh, classic uh, maturation uh, process of uh, the full-scale project, uh, i.e. Nini West and Nini Main. And finally, uh, I illustrate that in, in the bottom row of the time scale here is the expansion project where we uh, we go and uh, drill more wells, we install more cell systems and uh, and so forth. The, the current belief is that we can actually service all these activities throughout the years using our current uh, Siri main processing platform. Of course, service to uh, address or uh, fit to, to another kind of level of service, but, but still be maintained uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, this adds to the reliability part of the project together with the, uh, the operational experience and what we gain from the pilot project itself. Yeah, I think that was uh, the few words for me. Uh, thank you for your attention and uh, look forward to, to uh, deliver some uh, good updates uh, maybe in a half year time or so. Very much, Cern. Very much looking forward to it. Thank you.